you just take us through what um, Global Decisioning is all about and how you came into to this venture? Sure. So we started Mobile Decisioning in 2010. Um, and um, I, I basically, you know, I just come from trying to do a business that didn't do too well. So I wasn't really up to <laughs> starting another business. Um, and I, I tried everything, I, I, I struggled quite a bit to get there, but finally met a gentleman, my partner called Josphat. Um, he was the vice president of Renaissance Capital uh, for Africa at the time. And we were coming from one phone company for making a presentation um, uh, to, to Michael Joseph. And uh, you know, it was an interesting presentation, it didn't go like we thought it would, and we had all these expectations. But what we were trying to do is to use the phone system or the phone companies to see how we could extend credit bureau services, basically, but on the phone, because we had so many people on the phone and we didn't have enough people in the banking sector. Um, quite frankly, even if the whole of Kenya got onto the banking sector, it's still not enough to, to drive the traffic we would need because you know it's not every day you have to do a lending transaction in the bank. But every day on the phone you speak. <laughs> so we're trying to get into the phones and the, the mobile uh, world to see how we can we can do something. So anyway, we left Safaricom and on the way downstairs, um, I had a chat with Joseph who I was meeting for the first time. And I said to him, I have this other idea. Um, it's not my original idea. I've seen it already being done here. But um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, and try this out but it's gonna require a lot of capital and that's when you know he said okay fine just shoot me something he was going to back to South Africa he lives in South Africa he was going back to South Africa that night so he gets on the night flight which gets there at about 1 a.m. Kenya time <laughs> and then I get this phone call and he says Julian I can't believe what I'm looking at I think it's a great business I said oh is it <laughs> and he says yes you need to wake up I said can we talk about this in the morning he said no wake up, let's talk about it now. So he says, go to your laptop, and I go and I start checking my machine. He sent me some emails. But we're going through this stuff, and he starts to show me how this can be a very large business. And, you know, I, 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 I thought it was a good business, a Kenyan business, but he was thinking global. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, that's a new dimension, but just what we haven't even started. We have nothing. We haven't got systems. We don't know where to get the programmers. So uh, long story short is we, went ahead and started looking for capital. So he said, leave the capital part to me. You look for the, uh, the people that we need to make this happen. So I went to India, I went to China, uh, not, not China, I went to India, I went to the States, all this time just looking for programmers and people that we could use to build these systems. But they were right under our very nose in Kenya. <laughs> so we built the entire thing here. He was able to close some funding from some of his uh, friends. Um, and uh, before we knew it, uh, the condition was I have to sign a contract before I can draw down the money. So Airtel Kenya gave us the first opportunity. And, uh, you know, I, I met the Airtel Kenya CEO and he said, look, you have five minutes to tell me what this is all about. If I like it, we proceed. If I don't, uh, so I shared with him and he said, absolutely fantastic. Let's do it. And that's how the whole thing started. <laughs> We basically lend airtime to people that don't have any more airtime on their phone and qualify for a small loan of airtime. Right now we are operating in uh, Kenya, Uganda. Uh, we are in Zambia. Our largest operation is in Nigeria. Uh, we are in Cameroon. Um, we are finalizing on the uh, launches of countries like Rwanda, uh, another telco in Nigeria. We've got um, uh, Francophone Africa that's really opening up. So we are going to be in about another eight countries before the end of this year. So in total, we'll be in 13 countries by the end of uh, 2012. Now, you're also planning to move into New York or set up a shop in New York. Yes. Um, you also meant, mentioned Mexico. Where do you think this is going to take the company? Um, Part of the reason why, you know, the realities of life, Victoria, is you go to you go to some of these countries and you're telling them about this great innovation, and then you say it's coming from, uh, you know, 
people in Kenya have put this so strategically. Um, the innovation is actually not so much so from here, but we are uh, opening up a New York office to handle the Americas business because that cannot be handled from here. Different challenges. Um, we don't still have a direct flight to the U.S. from here. Um, there's countries that you know we may be going into that uh, would be better for us to get resources from those local countries, but they have to be headed by an office out there. So this will still be the operational head, but that will be the group head office um, so that it can handle the Mexico office, the Russia office. We're also opening up in Russia. Um, so that's, these are all the different places that, you know, God's just enabled us to, to penetrate and to go into. If all goes well, then the America's business will definitely be <laughs> maybe two times the size of the Africa business. Right. Yes. So I guess you're going more to a personal note. You spent a lot of time in the U.S. And um, how did those experiences, I guess, lead yeah. you to where you were? It was, it was an amazing experience. I mean, I... When I left Kenya, I, I mean, I thought I was doing okay uh, <laughs> until I got to the States, because um, I, I came from a, uh, you know, a middle-income family. Uh, my father was a banker. My mother was a counselor, and you know, together they, they, they did their best to raise us how they could, and we never really lacked, uh, and and it, so. But I, I call the United States of America or any country out there, outside of home, but mostly the U.S., I call it the equalizer. When you land in the U.S., it doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, who your parents are. When you land in the U.S., you, 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 you land in what I call the equalizer. So immediately I, I realized, hey, there's, there's bills to be paid. There's things to, so I, my first job was as a waiter. and. Um, I waited tables in, a, in an Italian restaurant. And I really enjoyed myself, actually. Uh, the first three months were kind of a shock, but after that, I started enjoying myself because I started learning the challenges that people that do those kind of jobs go through. Um, I started understanding society. I started understanding different people. I remember at one time, there was no one to really clean the plates. I couldn't believe they asked me to do that. But as I was learning it, I started enjoying it, and I started talking to the Mexicans that do it. I understood their families, their challenges. So long story short is, Victoria, I mean, I, I chauffeured, <laughs> so I was a driver. Um, and I didn't understand what all that was for. I said, geez, <laughs> I, 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 but over time, as the jobs kept getting better and better, by the time I was done, I was working in a company with over 4,000 people. I was. Um, a senior operations analyst in that company, and I had understood people. And I think people are not an easy thing to understand, but I understood challenges. Where am I going with all this? Um, right now, I can tell you, since I landed in this country, I have the same guy that was cleaning the offices I worked in that's working for me. Uh, he's, he's a happy camper, and uh, we've actually already uh, portioned uh, some of the company's um, shares vested or rather earned for him to earn over time. Why? Because I see his dedication in a whole different dimension. I, I don't go to a restaurant and underestimate the person serving me. I don't underestimate my workers. We have over 100 employees. <clears throat> And it's growing, you know, I think we estimate that they gave me a report that we should be about 400 of us by the end of this year. And that just starts to tell me we can't, you can't ask people to do what you can't do. So if, if they're going to serve a cup of tea, it's because I know I can go to the kitchen and sit with them and be able to, I'm not talking about getting too familiar, but I'm saying I understand them. And that, that is one priceless thing that no school could ever teach me in the States or anywhere. Um, and I think I've come back a lot more wholesome than when I left. Now, um, I just want to get your take on the state of business here in Kenya. Mm. Obviously, you saw something enough to return and really build here. Yeah. But what do you see the current state of business here in Kenya? And, and I guess also moving forward into the future. Um, let me speak of 
Kenya in the space of Africa and where it's going. Kenya, Kenya is without a doubt, without a doubt, and I think everybody's waiting to see our elections and, and, and how smoothly we transition. But without a doubt, uh, when we transition smoothly, because I hope we have no alternative, <laughs> uh, we are going to see the best five years to ten years that this country has ever seen. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that the place is pregnant with opportunities, the place is pregnant with growth. Um, I, I am convinced, and, and one of the attitudes we have to get rid of as Kenyans is this entitlement attitude. The government owes us nothing. Nobody owes us anything. We just need to work hard. And, and, and when you work hard, Kenya is going to springboard you into other territories uh, because it has the environment, it has the, look, look what's happening, look at all these funds coming in. You've got Helios have set up office here, HSBC is here, uh, name them, they're all coming here. All these funds are just landing in Kenya. General Electric is here setting up a major hub. Toyota is making serious decisions about Kenya. Everybody's coming here. Why? We are five hours to ten hours away from any destination you need to get to. Um, that, that could be major. And, and, and at the same time, we're creating the environment that allows us to be able to build amazing hubs. If, if they start, if these things start to happen, you don't want to catch it at the tail end. <laughs> you want to look at oil, you know, look at all this other stuff that's coming up. So you want to be in Kenya now. And, and, and I think one of the things I've been telling my friends out there in the States and Europe is, look, you know, I can't bully you to come back home. You know, that's, that's really your decision. But here's the thing, um, there was an American Revolution that none of us caught, all of us just went there after all those great things started happening in America. There was the uh, Russian uh, shift and none of us caught it. There was the Indian Revolution, a financial revolution, none of us was really there. There was a China Revolution, this is Africa's revolution. And it's going to be very sad if the whole world catches it except Africans. <laughs> And, and my challenge to people out there is you've got to have the guts to just get on a plane and come and try. And I keep saying, you know, you, you, have, you have the ability to be willing to paint stores in the U.S., to work in restaurants, to do all these hard jobs, but you don't want to try it here uh, because you think it's still the same Kenya we left when we left. You know, the Kenya we left, it was hard to own a refrigerator, to drive a car. That's not the Kenya we're living in. So I say to people, get back home, get back home now. There's amazing opportunities and you don't have to just do that. If you're out there, partner with those that are here that could do those things even while you're out there so that you can start to see what you can do. I have friends that are American citizens, Kenyans, that have decided to move home because they see the opportunity. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess there's, there's people who will never move. Uh, but there's those who choose to. I say to them, just come and put on the same effort. You'll be amazed what the reward is on this side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Victoria. I appreciate your time.